In this video, we will build a Node.js server, to handle messages for chatbots. First, let's create an empty folder on the computer. This directory, is where we store the source code of this Node.js server. Next, we will open up the Visual Studio code. Here, let's open the empty folder, which we just created. Select File, followed by the open folder. Find the folder, where you will write this project code. The folder we have opened up with the Visual Studio code, is a completely empty folder. We will build everything from scratch. To open a terminal, in the Visual Studio code, on the keyboard, press Ctrl plus backtick. Or in the toolbar, select View, then select the terminal. Before we jump into coding, there are a few things you need to keep in mind as follows. First of all, our computer has installed the Node.js environment. You can test it by doing the same what I did. If your computer has not installed the Node.js environment, you can also install it, by going to Google. Typing download Node.js. We will choose the first search result. Here, depending on the operating system, you choose the version of Node.js, that is suitable for your computer. After you have downloaded Node.js, you install it, it's very simple. After we have installed the Node.js environment, we proceed to create a Node.js project for the chatbot. To create a new Node.js project, we use the command, npm in it. Package name, we keep the default, press enter to continue. Version 1.0 Description Write a briefly describe for this project. Facebook Messenger Chatbot Entry point Is the file we will run the server. I will change to server.js, because simply, I don't like the index.js file. Press enter to continue. Author, write your name here. After finishing this process, immediately, we will have the package.json file in the root directory. This file, is where we manage the JavaScript libraries used in the project. To start writing code, we will install the following packages. The first is Express, a back-end framework. The second is the View Engine, EJS. Next comes the .env, and finally the body parser. After we finish the installation, our project has added node modules folder, and package lock.json. And the names of the packages we install also appear here. I will proceed to create a structure for our project. First, we will create a folder, named src, short for source code. This is where we write the source code for the project. Inside this directory, we create an entry point file, server.js. We will need a configuration folder. This is where we configure system parameters, such as view engine, session, or database connection. View folder to store the view files. The controller directory, that handles the requested logical requests. Public folder, to store public files, such as CSS, JavaScript at client side, and images. Services directory, will receive connection to Facebook APIs, then return the result. First, we will configure the view engine for the system. In the config directory, create a file, name config view engine. In this file, we will import express framework, then create an arrow function, named config view engine. We will export this function to use later. Module.exports, the name of the function you want to export. In this function, we will pass the input parameter, is the express app. We will config express app, to use a static link. That is the public directory, where we store the images, CSS, and JavaScript files. In addition, we also configure the view engine as EJS,
and finally, where we store the EJS files, is the view directory. App.set, views, then the path to the destination you store the view files, in this case, is the views folder. After that, in the public folder, we create the following directory. CSS to write style sheet files. JS for JavaScript. And images, to store images we use in this server. Next, in the SRC directory, we will create one more folder, roots, this is where we declare the roots used in the system. Create a new file, name web. We will define all the web roots in this file. Similar to the view engine, we will also use express for roots. Import express from express. After that, we will define a router variable, use express router. We create a function to store web roots. Don't forget to export this function. Module.exports, the name of the function you want to export. In this function, we return to a default value, that is, every route on the server always begins with a slash. We will define the router to return the home page. We use the method get, router.get, the root, then the server action. We define a function with request and response as two input parameters, and then execute a callback function. Use response.send to send a message. This function will simply return a hello world string. Control plus S to save changes. After that, we will configure the entry point file, server.js. In order to run the Node.js server, our server will run this file first. First, we will import the Express framework. After that, we will configure the server parameter, such as the view engine, declare the routes in the server, as well as convert the data sent to the server, as a JSON object, by using the body parser package. We will import the view engine, from the config directory. Then import all web routes, from the routes directory. We create an instance of Express. After that, configure EJS as the view engine. To use body parser, we use the syntax. App use, body parser, then call json function. Body parser, dot url encoded, then extended is true. The extended syntax, allows for rich objects, and arrays to be encoded into the url encoded format, allowing for a json, like experience with url encoded. We will declare the routes used on this server. Add a comment, then call the init web roots function, then pass the express app as the input parameter. To run the local server, we need to create a variable named port. This variable will get the value from the environment file. If in case we have not declared in the environment file, this variable will take the value of 8080. We will call express's listen method to run the local server on the port we specified. If we run the server successfully, this function will execute a callback function, where we simply print out a message, saying that our app, is running at the port we defined before. By default, Express will not understand the process.env syntax. 
In order to get the values of the variables in the .env file, we will use the .env package. Require .env at the beginning of this file. To run the project, we will use the command, node, followed by the path to the entry point file. We get this error. Saying that, the Node.js server doesn't understand the import syntax, or in other words, the import syntax is invalid. The import syntax, is the syntax used in ES6 and later versions, while require, is JavaScript's ES5 syntax. To be able to use the syntax of different versions of JavaScript, we will need a server-side compiler, here we will use the Babel package. First, at the root directory, we create the following files. git ignore file, to be able to push the necessary files in the project to github. env, and env.example are files that store environment variables. Babel RC is the Babel compiler configuration file. We will install the following packages, so that we can compile the JavaScript syntax for different versions. We install nodemon, to make the node server automatically restart, whenever it's detected we have file changes. Then install Babel compiler, including Babel core, Babel node, and Babel preset env. Wait a few minutes to this process to complete. Let's set up the Babel compiler. We will change the Babel RC file. In this file, we will use the following syntax, create an object, with the key set to presets. Its value is an array. Here, we will use Babel preset env. After the installation is complete, the package JSON file will update to add the newly installed packages. We will add a command to run the Node.js server. First, we define the command start. Here, we will use the node mon, execute babel node, and call our entry point file. To run the server, we use the command, npm start. Here, we used node mon, and the server was running successfully. To test, let's open up the web browser. Type localhost address port 8080. We will get hello world message. So, we succeed to set up, and run a Node.js server. The last thing we need to do, is to fill up the environment files. We start with the .env. To comment, we use the hashtag, then the comment, configure the app variables. In this video, we have already defined the port parameters in the entry point, so create this variable. We set its value to 8080. Then, copy this file, and paste to .env.example. We won't push the .env to GitHub for security reasons. We only push this file. In the next video, we will set up the Facebook webhook. Thanks for watching my video, and see you in the next video.